strangely enough, uh, I discovered the lute, um, you know, when I was playing classical guitar at a young age. I came into uh, this, um, this music that uh, they make you play when you study classical guitar, which is basically lute music. And uh, I didn't realize at the time it was lute music. Only later I discovered that um, there were actually uh, lute pieces from Shakespeare's time. And um, when I moved to New York, um, I came across an ad in the Village Voice for a lute teacher. And I thought that was kind of interesting. And um, I just went over and uh, this guy, Pat O'Brien, he was um, quite instructive and very modern. He had a very modern approach to it. But the first thing he told me was to write my own compositions for lute, which opened it up for me. And, uh, and so, um, you know, I studied a while with him, and uh, he always like he had like a really um, open approach to to the subject, which made it easier for me to study. And um, I guess you know it became like an obsession. I'm interested in um, like repetition of a few notes, and I'm interested in what that does to the listener. Uh, I'm not so interested in the dynamics of uh, soft and loud, you know, or fast and slow. You know, I, I'm more interested what something does to you when you listen to something for 45 minutes, and there's a repetition going on, and there is no linear progression. You know, I'm really interested in in this thing where you keep listening and the listening itself becomes the thing instead of the music. idea is that it has to interrupt because what I want to do is free up the loot you know dust it off you know because I think that uh, it's been too long like in the hands of uh, you know professors or people who like kind of claim it or so and I just want to make it sexy you know I just want to make it uh, bring it to a lar larger audience and the way for me to do this is also to do all kinds of things to it you know like of course, play the, the classical or folk material, but also um, do stuff like uh, in live concert uh, at uh, uh, field recordings of airports. is that it kind of replaces nature you know it becomes this um, 
kind of uh, a new, new surrounding. For example, when you hear the squeaks of the luggage wheels, you know, it reminds me of bird sounds, you know. And there is also this really um, this feeling of displacement, which uh, I really like. And I really like the um, announcements. Uh, let's say, for example, okay, you know, uh, don't leave your luggage unattended or it will be destroyed. It's a very displacing uh, atmosphere. And, um, you know, I, then what I also do is um, I put effects on that. So it goes from left to right on the speakers when I play live. And then in the middle is the lute, usually with a bass theme, you know. So it kind of uh, gives me a nice edge. And I think that. Um, just, you know, this, the, la the last album I did, Stations of the Cross, kind of played upon it that it's also a, a religious experience, that people don't congregate in churches anymore, but they go to airports, you know, and it becomes like this kind of uh, replacement of a church in a way. So I kind of um, used that and uh, um, included the story of the st uh, Stations of the Cross, you know, Christ's story kind of make a, a, a parallel, you know. the response I get because people will come up to me after the show and say oh you know I've never seen this instrument played I've never seen the instrument and this is the first time I get to see a lute and you know I get this like this compliment and that's really all I all I really wish you know it's not for me not so much about the repertoire but it's more about the instrument you know and freeing it up mm -hmm. 